order to do that, I would suggest that we think about basic community organizing, community development theory that I learned decades ago as a kid, right, organizing, is that if you want a community to participate with you, you have to go into that community, much as we just heard, and learn what their needs are and first participate with them. And then their interest will be sparked and then they will come into your organization and participate with you. It's just basic organizing theory. So I want to suggest that we keep that in mind as uh, I just sort of run through these slides. The first thing I would also like to suggest is that it's important to serve the communities. And we see our stores as anchors in different neighborhoods and for different communities. And this was our very first little location, Martha's smiling, because we started there together. Um, and now we have six locations throughout uh, the state. And we're a far-flung state. And um, we each, each store, each neighborhood has its own personality, its own needs its own community that we serve. And so we're really aware of that, and we try and build on that um, as we serve those communities. Um, our Food Shed Initiative and our Co-op Trade Initiative serves a community of producers. And, um, and then as we serve them building their markets, providing them with loans to scale up, then they come back and they participate with us in ways that you'll see in future slides. So our warehouse, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, our new warehouse, Throughout all the participation and throughout everything that we try and do, I think it's really important to continue that education that we do, why we do, what we do, how we do it, um, in a sort of low-key way, but just constantly putting it out there. Um, Creating opportunities for people to participate. We know that people in our community want to participate in something that they believe in, something that they believe is greater than themselves, something that makes them feel good about themselves and their contribution to the community. And so... Um, we also know that they need to have their needs met in that participation. And so um, that 18% discount that we'd give one hour, one shop at an 18% discount allows for low-income people in the community, people on fixed incomes, people who have disabilities and are, are on disability income to be able to come in. And our seniors are a perfect example of that so that we have this multi-generational community coming in into the co-op because we're meeting their needs by allowing them to get the kind of goods and services that only the co-op provides really in the way that we do in our community at a price that they can afford. Because what's the one thing that we hear all the time about our prices? Too high. Exactly. Your co-op prices are too high. Well, here's a way that we can combat that and meet the needs of the communities by doing that. So, um, Again, providing opportunities for people to come together, to participate in the co-op in the way that they feel good, because we are serving the need of the community. Uh, when we started our Earth Day Festival 23 years ago, there was no Earth Day celebration, no real environmental festival happening in Albuquerque at the time. We decided to do it. Now we're having to rebrand it because the larger Albuquerque community doesn't know if it's a city event or a co-op event or what. what is this event? but we know we all go, and that's, uh, that's uh, last year's festival. Bringing everybody together is another key point in participation and having them know that it is their co-op. They own it. They can use it. We embrace the diversity of our community. It is open. It is voluntary. It is safe for all cultures and all people and all diversities, and we honor that, and we love it, and we want them to participate and bring their culture into our co-op. Up. We, you know, that's important to us. So, um, key again. So we have, as you saw earlier, 200, over 200 at this point, volunteers that participate in 50 organizations, a number of public schools, a staff wellness program, and events like Earth Day. You're going to think, oh, gosh, that must cost so much. Really, it's just one-third of 1% 1 of our sales. So it doesn't cost that much. The loyalty that it breeds, the, um, the 
coming back into the co-op that it causes. We have put these people out in the community to serve the community in a very positive way, from building homes for Habitat to Humanity to wildlife rescue to whatever. Um, and then because they're so loyal in those organizations, because they want their 18% discount, then they come back into the co-op, bringing all of those other members of the community from those organizations with them. And so. Um, it's really well worth the investment that we make. Um, here's a, another, these are a bunch of examples of the ways the, that La Montanita tries to participate in the larger community. We have a script program. Many of you probably also have a script program where we work with uh, public schools and nonprofit organizations. They buy script from us at 10% less than the face value of those gift certificates, script certificates, and then they sell them to members of their community and raise that money for their organization. Um, some years we sell as much as $80,000 in script, uh, script certificates to public schools and nonprofit organizations. It means all those members of all those PTAs, of all the members of all those organizations are getting what they need for their organization, and then they come back into the co-op and they spend those script certificates. So it's sort of like we've already sold that food. Um, this is, I love this because this uh, school in Gallup bought a bunch of script certificates. They sold them out. They, we worked with them in their school garden. They grew pumpkins. They made pumpkin bread and then they gave pumpkin bread out to homeless people throughout the Gallup community. And that, that's the kind of um, participating and meeting the needs of our community that then causes folks to come back and participate with us. Um, and again, keeping that in mind. Growing community, going beyond the core. We all know we have our core shoppers, right? The people who vote in every election, who will show up at a board meeting, who care about, where's Marshall, who care about governance, right? Um, so, we, we have that core, but how do we go beyond that core? Again, we go into their communities, as the video right before us talked about, find out what they're talking about, find out what their needs are, and then have and then try and meet those needs. And so one of the things that we did is we realized we had a large homeless veteran population in Albuquerque, all over New Mexico. Um, we knew we needed farmers if we're going to scale up the local food system. So we put those two ideas together and created a veteran farmer project. These are some of the state and um, local organizations that partner with us, helping to fund that project, teach classes in that project, uh, really make that project go. These are some of the farmers, some of them who have received loans from La Montanita to scale up their project, who then come back and teach classes for our veterans. So you can see we have these concentric circles and sort of spiraling up in participation throughout the community. Um, these are some of the classes that we offer. Some of the, you can see some of the classes. We even had Tom Udall, our state senator, come down to our farm downtown. It's an urban farm, Alvarado Urban Farm, and um, visit with some of our veterans and folks. Again, veteran project. We sell at the VA uh, to people on limited income. Many of them are disabled. Um, many of the veterans that we work with are in treatment for PTSD living on the VA campus here in Albuquerque. We sell at the VA farmers market every Wednesday, um, building the hoop houses. So now getting to the next uh, way to participate. The, the food shed project made us realize that we had a lot of farmers that needed an extra five hundred to twenty five thousand dollars, I know that's a big range there, um, to get to the next level on their farm or buy a delivery truck or do whatever. So we started the La Montanita Fund to help those farmers scale up um, ways that they could do it. Um, we also wanted to create a vehicle because when we started uh, the slow we the slow money let me back up a little bit there the slow money conference the first national conference that slow money did was in Santa Fe we were a co-sponsor at that conference people came to us and said how can I invest in the local food system there's no real way there's no vehicle for me to invest in the local food system so we figured out that we 
needed to create one. And so people can invest. We have about 60 co-op members that are invested. We have $128,000 in investments. We've lent out over the past two and a half years $125,000 in revolving loans out to farmers throughout the community to help them scale up. We partner with National Resource Conservation Service, NRCS, to give loans because if you get a grant from NRCS, you have to put up your hoop house first, right? And then they, uh, then they, um, look at your hoop house, make sure it's done to their specifications, and then you get the grant. So how many farmers, you know, have five thousand to ten thousand dollars that they can just access to put up their hoop house? Well now they can because they have La Montanita fund. And again then those farmers bring that product into the co op. Um we've created a circle and closed the circle that investors know what farms they're invested in. The farms get to scale up. They then see people see that product at the store and they can participate in the whole circle from investing to consuming those products, creating a tighter circle of relationships in the community. And I would suggest that that's really what we want to do is create ongoing and deeper and broader relationships between our co-op members, our nonprofit organizations throughout the community, and the co-op, and that that will raise our, um, our boat. Uh, all of our boats in, in, uh, as co-ops. So, um, again, now speaking a shared language. So we've gone out, we've gone into communities, we've accessed their needs, we've talked to them about it, we've listened to them, we try and meet their needs in, in doing the different kinds of community participation projects that we do. And then we want to make sure that we speak their language. Um, a couple years ago, in conjunction with the board, we thought we would create a graphic novel because we really want to touch young people. And so we did create a graphic novel. It pretty much flies off the shelves at schools when we do health fairs on... Um, on our table at the new West Side store, I noticed right away our co-op comic was gone. The co-op newsletters were still there, but all the kids came in and grabbed a comic. And I mean kids of all ages, right? We had little kids and big kids taking those co-op comics. So, again, in Spanish and English, because we have a large Spanish-speaking population here in New Mexico, um, and we put it out at Earth Day, and, you know, it was like a little magnet for kids coming in. So get them when they're young, get them to love the co-op way, get them to understand the co-op model, and then send them out in the world to make more co-ops. That's sort of my theory for future development of co-ops. So, again, for uh, some of us old school people who are not so uh, social media savvy, we still have a printed version of our co-op news that also goes up on the website and um, is goes out on an e-news blast for folks about, what, 3,000, Sarah? About 3,000 people uh, get it every week or get it every month. We also, there's our there's our weekly e-news blast for those people who really love that, all that uh, email stuff. Here's our Facebook page. So we're really trying to talk to people at every level where they want to get their information, how they want to get their information, speaking that shared language. Um, and that, again, brings them back in because it's like, okay, they're talking to me in a language I love and know, um, and in a way that I can get that information that's comfortable for me. And um, I, I did go here kicking and screaming, and you can ask Sarah from the membership department. I was like old school hippie, right? Um, but And this is our newest application, our, our mobile app, so people can download it right on their phone. They can get their coupons. They can scan it at the register. And... Um, I just want to close by saying that um, it's really an honor to work in the co-op movement all these years and to see the movement grow and to, um, to honor that and to think together of how we go forward together because, um, as, as we all know, rising tides lift all boats. So let's lift all co-ops together here in the Southwest End. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you Robin. <laughs>